I'm not going to lie to you, you know the programs better than I do. But I'm going to try and relate it to Sola Health. I know you agreed with me because I heard some of you nod your head. So. <laughs> okay, with, uh, with CSP, we have uh, the Soil Quality tra Control Traffic System. Why is that important? 85 to 90 percent of the soil is compacted on the first pass. If we can keep those wheel tracks in that same area all the time, we're keeping the rest of the soil and the rest of the field um, in its uh, better state so that more water can infiltrate and more oxygen can get down into the, uh, the, to the microbes. Here we have a use of cover crop mixes. Let's remember what the four cornerstones of soil health are. Little or no disturbance, diverse cropping rotations, or diverse uh, cover crop mixes. Because corn and beans is not a diverse crop rotation. Um, next one is living roots year round, because that's what feeds our microbes. And then also uh, residue year round, because that's the armor that protects the soil against the erosion and the crusting. So if we have uh, use of cover crop mixes, we keep feeding our microbes year round because we have the, res uh, the roots year round. We also start adding another food source for the microbes because we cannot eat just one thing all the time. I cannot eat just pizza. That's why I eat Starburst jelly beans too. And I do <laughs> just fine. But er you cannot just eat one thing and be productive. So we have to give our microbes a diverse meal to eat so that they can thrive also. And also when we have diverse cover crop mixes out there, we're protecting our soil against any kind of erosion. Because that will, that vegetation stops that impact of that raindrop, which will keep that soil in place. Okay, then now we got one that for a deep rooted crops to break up compaction. This is where we use our radishes, our um, turnips, canola, even sugar beets have been used, okay? But we break up that compaction layer so we can get the moisture deeper in the profile for when the roots need it. Also, we've had some more intense rains this past spring, and after a couple of them we started hearing how the ground is saturated. So we're starting to get more erosion, more water running off. I believe it's because they're saying the ground is saturated because we have a plow pan out there, a compacted layer that does not allow the water to move down, so it's got to run off. If we could get rid of that plow pan, we'll get more water in there and we'll reduce a lot more of that uh, runoff, which means our soils won't be as saturated as they think. Here we go with intercropping. What a great idea. When we go out with our corn and beans, we're, we have a desert in, be, uh, in between the rows for our microbes. They have nothing to eat. If we can get something growing in between, we're feeding our microbes, making our overall soil productivity much, much better. Dave Brandt is actually, because he does trial plots out there, he's actually started to interseed soybeans in between his corn and is starting to see some very good results. But we're feeding our microbes uh, in between the rows, where normally that's where we start losing our numbers. Version of cropland and grass-based agriculture. Again, when we do this, we're starting to get the roots out there year-round. We're protecting that soil. We're feeding our microbes, but we're also creating a more of a, a food source for our cattle. And really, I talked about the four cornerstones stones of soil health. Really, there are five. We never talk about the animals, the cattle. We need that manure and urine out there too. And here's a good uh, way to start getting incorporated 